race, this main event, the Super 250 Supercross main event, is only 15 laps. So you got to get it while you can. Anytime you can, rip that throttle, twist it, go for it. I think you got to find the flow. It's the first race. You want to get a good start, and you just want to get out there and get back because you've been doing testing and qualifying, and that's what you're doing on a daily basis. So you don't want to be out there you know, without the flow, bumping off everyone, missing your lines, high side in the turn, just getting a nice groove. And Ricky's mimicking my hand movements as we're in the TV booth there. I can't talk about my hands, Ricky. It's not work. Those Great. are the Rocky Mountain so you got MC.com keys of the race. You see the Chaparral starting grid. Ken Roxon's a heat hey, race Ricky. winner. He's pumped and ready to go. I mean, you got? I do analysis, not predictions, Ricky. Okie okay, doke. Uh, I gave the fans at home all the information they need. And they make their own thing. There you go. Politically correct. Here's the first main of the year. 250 Supercross West main event. There's the reigning champ, Eli Tomac. Osborne right alongside on the 338. Gate drop time. From the outside, once again, that seems to be the way to oh! go. Jesse Nelson once again with the whole shot from the outside. He oh, clips that him. first one and goes over the bars. Davalos is in it right there on the 40. Oh, oh that was huge. And oh, wow. Is that the 36 as well? Yeah. It is. The yeah, 36 that's, that's is Nelson. Yep. Take a look at it. Here. I don't know if he misses a shift or if he tries to to stay low on the little double and just comes up short. Oh, he's oh. like a neutral or something. Well, yeah, something. No. Oh, then somebody went right over it. And that oh. caused a uh, chain reaction. I believe that was Baggett. He's 17th right now. He'll watch right here. Yeah, he just holds the front wheel low. See, Baggett almost goes down, almost gets landed on, keeps it on two wheels, but Baggett is outside of the top 15. He got through there on the 80. Vicious. Look at this. Up front, uh, Eli Tomac. Roxon runs in second. Wow, look at that right there. Tomac, he's feeling the flow right now. It's not with the competition. He needed to see it all as the reigning champ out front. But if there's one guy here today in, in all the qualifying and even the heat that has a chance of stopping Eli Tomac, it's Ken Roxon. He's right there. Malcolm Stewart runs in third. Yeah, this is a, this is this is Roxon's time right here. He wants to show that he's serious about this. He cannot let Tomac get away. You know Tomac's done the work. You know that to, uh, Roxon has. So here's his opportunity. He needs to set the tone right here, Jeff. Yeah, and then we'll get a chance to focus on the lap times right now. Tomac goes fast with a 57-1. Roxon comes by with a 56-9. Roxon, that lap actually quicker than Tomac, and Tomac nailed the clock. Seeley runs in fourth. Malcolm Stewart in the, in the third yeah. spot, it, right in this. It looks like to me, Tomac, he's out front, really kind of maybe even overriding the bike a little bit. And Roxon really has had that nice, easy flow turning these fast laps on. Anderson behind Seeley Lee. Right there, there's Baker and Craig in here. Baker is on the 30. Craig actually on that 59. Rattray on the 28 right there with him. Scoring at home, Davalos is back up on the bike. Sliding right out from oh, under Christian Craig. Goes to the front wheel. Gives up uh, three or four positions there. He was eight. Eight uh, that time around. He's going to drop a few. Trying to get himself going again. Back up closer to the front. We watched the fight over third. Stewart and Seeley. Wow, Stewart right up front there or in that top three. Turned a 57.2 last time around. Tomac last time around went 55.7. So he just dropped Roxon by a lap. I'm uh, sorry, a second. Yeah. He's on the bike. Wow, that is 
fast on a 250. Oh, let me yeah. tell you. And you want to talk about, you know, I was talking about riding aggressive. Jeff, you can agree with me on this. Eli Tomac, if there is, I mean, he twists that thing harder than anybody does. Yeah, 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 yeah he definitely, and that's and that's because of his fitness. He, he, his preparation is there, and it shows it. And, uh, you know, yeah, that throttle's either wide open or it's not. Watch right here, double. He bounces the quad, gets his foot out, rails it outside with tons of momentum, skips across that, keeps tons of momentum, right? The wide line coming out of that, nails the triple, look at that. He's feeling the flow. You know, I talked to Eli earlier today, and I said, so what did you treat yourself to after the championship? And he said, well, I went out and bought a house. I even got... <laughs> I even get to use the master bedroom. His folks still hang out with him when he comes to Southern California, but he didn't treat himself to anything flashy. It is a battle. Yeah, yeah right this here. is over. Cole Seeley, we're watching here in the 43 holes down four. Jason Anderson there on that Rockstar Suzuki. He's just behind this group. And last lap around, Jason Anderson was a 57 1. They were, they were just a little bit quicker ceiling in himself than Stewart. So this is going to tighten up here. And the sandwich going on. Yeah, that's Malcolm so, right in front of him. You're so. talking about Malcolm so many times last year, so close to the podium at times, riding good. Maybe tonight could be his night. He's looking good. Well, his MO, he's made some mistakes at times late in the, uh, in the races, even the opener at Dallas last year. Malcolm was fourth in Vegas last year. There you go, Sealy's all over him right here. Look this at is the, for the podium. Trying to find a way to pass him. Looking inside, uh -huh. can't get it done there. For the finish line jump. Yep. He's working it, trying to find a spot. Oh, a little front wheel high there going into the turn, and that's going to allow Sealy to get a drive out of the turn over the triple. Comes up inside. Oh, oh there's contact oh, oh, oh. there. Going into that corner. Sealy comes out with the position. Third place down to the 43. And here comes the 21 of Anderson to push Malcolm back another position. Oh, Malcolm back to the inside. Now he chooses to fall in line. Both riders missed the double out of the turn when they got together. That allowed Anderson a little momentum through the whoops. Took advantage of it. He's on the move. Anderson up to fourth, just turned to 58 last lap around. Both of our leaders are in the 56th second lap time range. Seeley won this race a year ago, looking to at least get on the podium here tonight. Well, check that as uh, Anderson and Stewart go by. It's Tomac once again with another 55, Rocks in a 56, Seeley a 57, then it goes up from there. Yeah, it's got to be frustrating for Ken, you know, to be right there where he needs to be. And he's and that's almost the best spot when you're behind the guy, you know. And, and you know, watch him kind of pull away a little bit. Man. Yeah, nothing he can do about I, it right I, now. I honestly thought he would kind of catch up to him because he's looking good all day. But that just shows you how fast Eli Tomac is. This is the Baker Rattray fight over Sixth right now, Baker's on the 31. Uh, Tyler Raftery on that green 28. You think? You know, I, I, I'm going to say something. I think Baker had a little bit of an advantage right in that last year's qualifier because it's cold out tonight, and, and it's, it's really important to keep your body warm and keep the, you know, the blood flowing really good. And I'm thinking that th this is really helping him in the main event. He's riding really good. He just got passed by Rattray, and Lee is next on that 80. He's in red. He can pull it off, and Sykes is behind him. Rattray on the move, as he always is. Look at this. Boy, right Baker. back out of his Baker. He lost the spot, retakes the position. That's another one of those Rockstar Suzuki's behind them. That is Ryan Sykes, one of the veterans. He's on the move currently in ninth. There's a, there's a really strong battle here just behind Baker. He's in sixth. And it's all the way back outside of the top. Can't believe that's five to six riders. Oh, right he's going to get close there. 
Rattray was right there. I thought Baker was going to jump right into his wheel. Rattray gets around him, and here comes Lee. Oh, Lee passes going. him as wow. well. Look at Lee. was in the perfect spot. Look, and here comes Sykes. Sykes comes through on the 35. So now all of a sudden, the wheels start to come off of it for Baker. Sykes, the former main event winner here in the 250 class. Trying to square it up. Oh, here with Max Snap. That's Anstey. another Suzuki. Is that Anstey? Max Anstey? Yeah. 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 the 74. Button down there. That's the blue bike. Way to keep his uh, sights in front of him, looking ahead. Remember earlier, we kind of talked about that red zone and things start to happen really quick for you. That's what's happening to Baker right now. Things are happening. Guys are coming around, and you just can't oh, see Lee. Lee. Right there. Together, and keep focusing, keep his last time there. Yeah. And especially... Look at Lee right there. You took him Lee running a wide line there. Oh, oh, oh look at that. Oh, and he misses Anstey. the double. And Anstey on that yellow Suzuki right there. Cunningham now getting into the picture. Zach Osborne in 12. He's starting to become a player here, trying to knock on the door. And what I say earlier, I thought there were at least 15 riders that were good enough to be inside the top 10. These guys are major 250 Supercross stars. Zach Osborne, Craig Cunningham. These guys aren't even in the top 10 yet. No. Not to mention Davalos is back there. Back is still back there. Yeah. I'm Actually, Davalos is out, sorry. Really like what I see from this 250 Supercross class how fast they are, just a new generation of riding. Pretty impressed they would leave here to yeah. tonight. This is basically, a, you know, um, a privateer effort, uh, the team that he's on. And, oh, and Steve goes oh, up inside. Oh, oh. Contact at the top of the bird. Max will come away with the position. See on the right-hand side there, that's the mechanics area. And they've got basically a whiteboard. And they put the pit board out with either lap times, words of encouragement, things like that to keep the rider focused. You know, maybe key words that you talked about and planned beforehand, but a lot of words of encouragement right there for the riders when they come through that area. Osborne's on that 338. He's closed in a little bit. He's in the white and black riding here. He's holding down 10th behind Lee. And he started way on the inside, and he got bumped early, set him way back. I, when you watch that replay again, we probably see that it was Zach Osborne was another rider that got caught up in that crash out of the first turn involved Nelson, Nelson and Baggett and those riders, Pablo's. But so he's working his way through. Really closing in here, Osborne on that 338. Yeah, yeah I, I was going to say, I'm, I'm happy for Osborne. You know, he uh, great, great amateur racer. Didn't have the best of luck when he made it, even when he turned professional. Had to go to Europe to race. He did pretty good over there. Came oh, 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 dude, couldn't get it. He didn't cut and leave any, any slack there. And I, if I remember correctly, these two riders came through the system, the amateur system, pretty much at the same time. So we got a little history going here. We're making, making history right That's now. That's right. It's good for us. But I, I, so he came here last year, just rode the Supercross, the, you know, the West Supercross, and did really good. Amsoil factory connection, took and notice. There he is. Fighting, the opportunity. Fighting overnight, and it goes to Osborne for now. He gets his opportunity, and he needs to make the best of it. He's doing good, coming from behind. Yeah, you get a good shot there, that close-up shot, guys, of how deep those ruts are coming out of the right hander. And that's one of those turns where you really got to get the power to the ground and just sit into it. That's why the bikes just chew up such, such deep ruts. And uh, they, they start wide, and those ruts always seem to get lower and lower and lower back to the inside. Working the final two laps of this race. One to go soon. And it's Eli Tomac out front here, the reigning champion in this 250 West Championship. 8.3 second lead last time around. Rossi did turn a little bit quicker the lap time, but uh, Tomac's got such a nice cushion built up. And, you know, he's coached by a good friend, former Marine Cross champion, Buddy Antonez. They've been close ever since Eli was a young guy because Eli's father, John, trained and helped Buddy Antonez win his five Arena Cross championships. So, Big effort here, a lot of friends, everyone working together, and it shows. And this guy, Kohami team, and he's back up on top here. 
always that the gauge, right? That pendulum. Is it the pro circuit team, or is it the Geico Honda team? They, they really are the premier teams in this class. Tonight, it looks like they've got their reigning champion back on track. Making it look easy, huh, Ricky? <laughs> That's what practice and preparation does for you. I mean, he's a great rider to start with. That always helps, but he's got a great routine. And, and, and you know, we were talking about that, he and I, and, and talked about the fact that he grew up in Colorado, and he said Colorado, by living there, helped keep him out of the limelight of Southern California and focused on his racing. And he focused his way to a win here to kick off the 2013 season for the 250 class. Eli Tomac, the reigning champ, takes the season opener. Roxanne will come home in second. Seeley in third. Good feeling right there, huh? <laughs> you betcha. That's what it's all about. Long off season pays off. Now, there's never really much of a question as to whether or not Eli Tomac would be ready to go. Boy, did he deliver a knockout punch tonight.